Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little different. I want to address the first copyright strike I've ever received on this channel. Yesterday, I uploaded a video where I shared my thoughts and theories about the mysterious case of Abby Williams and Libby German, the two young girls from Delphi, Indiana. I always strive to provide a unique perspective and theory that hasn't already been extensively covered on YouTube. Before creating my videos, I spend time watching other YouTube channels and listening to different theories. I believe it's important to gain insights from various perspectives, even if they oppose my own. I conduct online research since I can't physically visit the area, and then I present my unique theory. My intention is to offer a fresh perspective from a neutral standpoint, devoid of any emotional attachment or conflicts with anyone involved in the case. It's worth noting that my videos are never monetized, and they never will be. I go above and beyond to show respect, give credit, and promote the channels from which I gained insights. Instead of simply telling my subscribers what I think happened based on other videos, I prefer to show them the videos and provide links for them to explore on their own. I always expect copyright claims, and I'm more than happy to share other creators' content and help them monetize their videos through the views on my channel, if that's what they desire. Interestingly, even some of the most controversial creators in the true crime genre, such as Bullhorn Betty, Molly Go Lightly, and Benny Keys, with tens of thousands of subscribers, have never issued a copyright strike against my channel, even when I've made light-hearted jabs at them. However, this time, I included content from channels such as John Kelly's, a criminal profiler with over 20,000 subscribers, Don't Hate. Create, with just over 1,000 subscribers, the late Michael Stroop, who had almost 4,000 subscribers, and Thomas Frost, who has nearly 2,000 subscribers. John Kelly provided excellent commentary that acknowledged the efforts of online volunteers who dedicate their time to finding answers in this case, applauding their selfless work. I clipped that segment and included clips from other creators who shared a similar sentiment. Michael Stroop was an exceptional reporter who caught Trooper Riley off guard outside a conference, obtaining valuable information that he shared on his channel for everyone to reference. Don't hate. Create pays incredible attention to detail and shares her findings with her subscribers. Now, let's talk about Thomas Frost. Like many others, he filmed videos in the area and shared them on his channel. The insights I gained from his videos were the concerns he expressed while being at the exact location. It gave me an idea of how people feel when they visit the site and inadvertently showed how easy it is to trespass unknowingly. Although I could have found similar content on various other channels, I was directly referred to Thomas Frost's channel by a moderator from Delphi After Dark when I expressed my interest in content from locals. It's important to note that Thomas Frost doesn't live in Delphi but visits the area to document what he calls the kill zone. Ironically, it wasn't the internationally recognized criminal profiler and psychotherapist, John Kelly, who issued a copyright strike against my channel. It was Thomas Frost, an individual who refers to the location where two teenage girls were tragically killed as the kill zone. Upon discovering the copyright strike, I noticed that Thomas Frost also has his PayPal posted on his channel. To me, it seems like he doesn't care about resolving the case or keeping it in the public eye. Perhaps, it's not even about money since he could have simply claimed the rights to any views generated by my video, which at most was 20 views. This leads me to believe that his motives are driven by fame, recognition, and attention. Well, Thomas Frost, here's the attention you've been seeking so desperately. Attention that you'd rather have overshadow the victims in this case. Now, without his footage or commentary, let me share the rest of the video that resulted in my first copyright strike from this attention-seeking creator. I don't want content from self-interested, exploitative tragedy pimps on this channel anyway. So, to put it plainly, fuck you Thomas Frost. And now, here's the remainder of the video. The two young girls up in Delphi, Indiana, about a year and a half ago, that were found murdered. And I started to think to myself, wow, you know, there's no sense in us even getting involved in this case. This case is going to be solved pretty quickly. It's going to be solved sooner than later. And of course, I'm talking about the case of Libby German, 
Martin Abbey Williams. The German actually got a picture of the major suspect involved here and also got a sound bite of his voice. So we got a picture and we got a voice recording. So I thought for sure this guy's going to get caught a lot sooner than later and that'll be the end of it. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Here we are in 2019 and we're still looking for this guy. And I'd like you to take into consideration is the people that put a lot of time into this case. You have a lot of people out there that are very concerned about the deaths of these young girls. The power is in question. Situation where we got a case that uh, that you know, this person's never apparently committed a crime before. We have you know you would feel that he had never committed a crime. He has no DNA in the database. Well, I, I can't comment on that, but I'm just saying that's what it looks like. I mean, it's a possibility he's done something that we we can't find any traces of. That was my first thought. I thought anybody at that age that would commit a crime like that would have priors. Well, you, you just, know, you never know. Well, you've got to start somewhere. I'm not the jury. All, all we do is collect that. No, business. right. But that's why I was just wondering if there was anything that you could share upon no, Not at this point in time. Okay. But appreciate you asking. I have wish my eyes on it, you know, as hard as I can. After it was over, um, that's when I got the information from uh, Trooper Riley about the uh, suspect never committing a crime before. But that opened up so many doors because then when you think about it, it's like, I don't know who in the hell never committed a crime before. Research the area. I mean, I don't mean research, look it up online. I mean, walk it. No, I understand. Yeah, and that, trust me, that area's been walked very well. I spent two weeks out there doing it myself, as well as a bunch of other people. And also, the, most of this is all private property. It's very, very uh, reviewed by these people. You don't go on there, you'll get arrested. But what were they looking for? So They are very engaged in everything that they can find out about this case. And they need to be congratulated because they're doing this on their spare time for no money. They're just volunteering, volunteering their services any which way they can to try and help out. And I'd also like to bring out law enforcement. I think law enforcement is doing everything they possibly can on this case. At least that's the way I feel. I mean, I can't even imagine somebody from law enforcement, a cop, not wanting to catch this guy. This guy who killed off the innocents of Libby German and Abby Williams. The power is in the question.